Hey guys, welcome to another week of the Underwriting Guy. I have an easy one for us today, but a very important one, as I have seen some mortgage professional struggles with this guideline. Today we will be discussing large deposits for conventional for both Fannie and Freddie, FHA, VA, and USDA. Please note that we will be discussing the agency guideline. Your mortgage company might have overlays and the underwriter can deem to source any deposit they wish as underwriters have to make sure that all down payment is coming from an acceptable source and there's no money laundering or new liabilities. With that being said, let's get into it. First, we're going to discuss conventional loans with both Fannie and Freddie. Both Fannie and Freddie are very similar guidelines. The minimum guideline is that we must source any deposit that is 50% or greater on the monthly income on purchases. For refinances, Fannie Mae leaves it up to the underwriter to determine if we need to source any deposit, but the seller, also known as the underwriter, must determine if any deposit resolve in a liability. Freddie Mac does not have the same wording in their guideline for refinances. So no matter what, on purchases and refinances for Freddie Mac, we will need to source any deposits of 50% or more of the borrower's qualifying income. FHA is pretty self-explanatory. If it's more than 1% of your purchase price, you must source it no matter what. Again, an underwriter can request sourcing of any deposits. An example of when I would request for a deposit to be sourced that's less than 1% of the purchase price is if the deposit impacts my earnest money. There's so many other examples I can give when an underwriter might ask for sourcing of a larger deposit less than 1%, but FHA states if it's 1% of the purchase price or greater, we must source it no matter what. This brings us into VA and USDA loans. I'll be talking about these together as both of these loan products, there's not a lot of guidance in the guidelines. They leave it up to the underwriter to make a determination. Personally, I use the same guidance for VA and USDA as I use for FHA, which is 1% of the purchase price. And depending after my analysis of the bank statements and the loan file, I might ask for additional deposits. There is one thing that is different for USDA loans. All non-payroll deposits must be explained or sourced. I've talked to several different underwriters and some fully source any and all deposits that are not payroll. But what I do is get a letter of explanation for all non-payroll deposits that are less than 1% of the purchase price and anything over 1% of the purchase price, I ask to fully source it. The reason behind USDA being so different is because USDA is very heavy base on the income program and we need to see which deposits are income driven. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in this week. I appreciate everyone's continuing support. Please make sure to share this video if you think anyone out there will benefit from my videos. And please make sure to subscribe on YouTube and like us on Facebook. And see you guys next week.